Hello and welcome to a special episode of the Managing Madrid podcast. We've got a two-parter coming your way today. Part two with Lucas Navarrete. Some hot takes from Lucas today. That's coming up later. Part one, right now, we got Angelo Valdez making his Managing Madrid podcast re-debut. This is his second appearance. Co-host of Los Futbolitos. Uh, co-host of Los Futbolitos. And Thank you, bro. A man of many hot takes himself. You probably seen him. He is the guy you want to listen to if you're a Spanish listener. So all of his work and content is mostly in Spanish. And he does stuff for the yep. Kings League. He has his own very successful podcast in Spanish. And my most proud achievement that Angelo has achieved so far in his career is that he is also a very loyal Managing Madrid podcast listener, which is always appreciated. Angelo, welcome to the show, buddy. How you doing? Bro, I'm doing good. Thanks. Thank you for inviting me again, and I'm grateful to be here again. So this, you know, you basically inspired me to start my own show, and that's basically what happened, and you're basically a big part of it. So thank you so much, and, and let's do it. Uh, this part one is going to be very, very, we're, we're going to talk, you know, facts. Remember, the word facts. Everything that we're going to say in part one is going to be facts, okay? So I'm ready. Let's do it. If Yeah, if you don't like uh factual information we suggest you skip to the next episode it might not be for you so or, or yeah if, if you don't like factual information just go and watch diego's uh content and you will see a lot of not factual <laughs> content there damn just drive by shooting on diego lorin i apologize diego for that <laughs> uh all right so oh the other thing you might not if, if you're sick of mbappe discussion you also may want to skip this episode but I'm going to guess that you're not going to skip it, even if you publicly say you're sick of the Mbappe discussion, because we all see the numbers, we see the clicks, we see the hits. So you might admit, you might not admit it, but you're listening to this episode as well. As well. Um, what's new with you, man? Where are you these days? Are you, you're always doing something cool, whether it's Kings League or you're playing f- football with Ibai you're, or you're fighting with Aguero. What's going on? <laughs> nah, yeah, we're right now fully focused on the Kings League. On the Kings League, we have our own team in the Kings League Americas. Uh, we are presidents, Galacticos. Actually, the name is Galacticos. I took okay. the name, basically stole it. Florentino hasn't given me a call yet telling his copyright. But we took, it's Galacticos del Caribe. So Caribbean, Galactics, Galacticos, Galactics of the Caribbean. And yeah, bro, it's been great, but it's been greater this month. You want to know why? Tell me. Because he's official, man. Mbappe is coming. Finally. This is not 2022. This is not 2023. This is a new year, a new me, a new Mbappe. He's coming, man. It's over, bro. I know you sometimes take the pessimistic side of things. It's time to sell the smoke. He's coming, bro. There's no way this doesn't happen. We should make a bet, bro. We should make some type of bet. If, if it does, <laughs> There's no chance I put a single cent towards anything Mbappe related. No chance. It's not worth it. There are many... That, that, okay, so let's talk about it because I, I want to, by the way, if you're listening to this episode, thank you so much. And we're going to talk about this part one, right? We're going to talk first about Mbappe. Then we're going to talk about the Champions League. What are the real chances Real Madrid have to win the Champions League? Because we have a great team. We have a great squad. Do we have enough to win the Champions League? Do we have enough in 2022? What happened in 2022? We're going to talk about that also later in the podcast. So make sure to stay tuned. Up uh, Mbappe, bro. Come on. He's coming. He, You know he's not renewing. And if he's not renewing, then will he really go to Liverpool? Will he go to another club that's not Real Madrid? Because Fabrizio Romano, even though I don't trust him for Mbappe news, because he just repeats what everyone says, even he knows that if Mbappe is going, is not renewing the PSG and he's leaving Paris Saint-Germain at the end of the season, he's going to Madrid. That last Fabrizio update was a whole lot of nothing. I don't know what he said, but he basically yeah, just regurgitated everything that we've heard for the past five years. It was that there's been no contact between Real Madrid and PSG. Mbappe has made up his mind, but he still hasn't fully publicly admitted it. I, I, I just, uh, why are you so sure this time? I think it's pretty obvious why. Um, so first of all, this is what happened with Mbappe, in my opinion. This is what's going to happen. I think... We're actually uh, in different terms. This is not 2022. Why am I saying this is not 2022? Because in 2022, he still, it's not the same, right? Imagine you have a relationship with a female or whatever, whoever, right? We're inclusive here in Management Madrid. You have a relationship with someone. You break up with them. 
you come back. If you break up again, it's it's almost like you're probably not coming back with that person again unless you're crazy. Mbappe already has in his uh, career already a few offers from Paris Saint-Germain. He already had the renewal. He already tried. He's been in Paris Saint-Germain since 2018. I think 2017, actually. So he's been there seven years in Paris Saint-Germain. He has tried it all. He's played with all the stars. He played with Neymar. He played with Messi. Everything happened that Messi, oh, yeah, yeah. So what he's going to do is he's going to play two years with Messi, and then he's going to go to Madrid. That basically happened. He played the two years with Messi. He tried it all with Paris Saint-Germain. And not only has the Mbappe uh, side of the story changed, not only has he already tried and done it in Paris Saint-Germain, also the Paris Saint-Germain camp is not on the level, it's, it's not the same. Bro, you saw what they did last summer. They took him out of the preseason tournament. Like that doesn't that usually never happens. Remember the last time a player was basically the best player of that team was removed from the preseason uh, group was basically playing with the with the discarded right the discard and he and he didn't leave the club. That doesn't usually happen. Usually, what happens is when that when that when a player does something like that, they usually leave the club. And it's pretty obvious by reports. Listen, you can believe them or not. I believe Twitter, okay? I trust in Twitter. But if, if you if you see the reports, Paris Saint-Germain it has a different take now. Because they are willing to sell Mbappe. They want to renew him, obviously. Like, everyone would like to renew their best asset. Every single team in every single sport. But if he's willing to leave, they he forgot, he basically forgave some money. And I think they're ready. I think it's it's a different scenario. I think every card is being played out almost very in a very good way. I wouldn't like to say perfect. But it's it's a very good scenario for Mbappe to leave. I think it's it's not the same as it was two years ago or even a year ago, in my opinion. PSG's demeanor towards him has definitely shifted. I think their stance and the the way they talk about him has been different. The this is the thing about Mbappe himself, and this is the way I look at it personally, or at least the way I would do it personally. If any team banish me from training for literally doing nothing. He didn't do anything this summer. Yeah. Nothing. He didn't no. do anything. He didn't speak once. The whole the whole uh well, the whole sego was was completely fabricated in the summertime. Yeah. I'm not I'm not talking about well, apparently uh, apparently he did send a letter saying he won't renew though. <clears throat> well that's what I but well, not publicly well, the thing, but no, his 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 intention publicly was always pretty clear in that he is going to see out his contract at PSG, but yeah. he doesn't want to yeah, renew, true. right? And that's all he did, and then he got banished for that. Like so, yeah. In what's that's not a normal behavior from a sports franchise towards their star player. That's not something you do. So, I just think from a culture perspective, you got to have integrity. And be like, I'm not tolerating this. It doesn't matter how many dollar signs you throw at me. I'm just not tolerating this culture, this behavior. And also this squad you built around me is complete ass. With all due respect, like even that messy Neymar thing was, uh, I understand why you have to do it. I understand that if you have the opportunity to put Messi, Neymar, and Mbappe together in one team, like you do it. But do it understanding the pitfalls of it tactically of how bad it's going to be from a defensive structure standpoint. And by the way, that's something I, I I think needs to be explored if he does arrive. Because I think defensively, there's going to be question marks. But I think the biggest difference will be we have a way better structure from a midfield spine standpoint than PSG had during the, the Mbappe, Messi, Neymar era, plus what they have now. So from a structure perspective, he's going to be a part of a better team, better project. I just, having said all that, I just never know with him. I, the only thing I can say for certain Angelo is Liverpool. There's no way Liverpool don't have a, the money or the, the pedigree that Real Madrid have PSG. You could at least I mean, argue. That's unfair though. Well, no one has the pedigree, right? Well, the, well, you, whether it's fair or unfair, Liverpool is not going to get Mbappe. PSG. You can right. make the argument at least they don't have the pedigree and the culture and the project, but they do have the money. And so you could see him they going back. Have the money, yeah. It's, it's, it's yeah. gotta be that it's gotta be either PSG or, or Real Madrid. And I'm just not sure I have the faith in him and his family 
because we all know that family when is it, when family is involved with all this, it's a nightmare to deal with. And his mother publicly said, "If we if a couple offered us one billion, we'd take it." And I said, "Like I I appreciate the honesty. I respect the honesty that you said that publicly." But that's what we're competing with, Angelo. So that's why I'm just kind of like, eh, wake me up when it's over. You you woke me up I, before it's over. Uh, I'll, bro, I'll tell you this right now, man. When I see that tweet, when I see that official, here we go. Yeah, I'm I'm basically exploring your phone, man. I'm waking you up, definitely, bro. Um, what I what I think is, this is my thing with with. I, I definitely understand why we should not trust Kylian Mbappe and his camp. I understand that perfectly because we have been fooled, right? We have been fooled actually by the media because he has never said, I'm playing for Real Madrid this year. Yes, I, I agree with that. that. It's the and media. We have been fooled by Twitter and Marca and Jose Felix Diaz, and we have been fooled by the media. Yes. Honestly. Yes. It's not even Florentino. Like Even Florentino himself got fooled by Mbappe in 2022. That happens. That happens, man. The guy can't be perfect. He's already done enough, right? It happens. We have been fooled by the media. Let's do this. Let's just listen to what the actual um, protagonists of the stories are saying. Florentino said a while ago, you saw that video, I'm signing Mbappe, not this year, next year. Okay. We already know Florentino is trying to sign him this year, actually. Not what uh, El Chiniguito says. No, Madrid is not trying. Not what Jose, Jose Felix Diaz said. A month ago, no, Madrid is not even thinking about Mbappe. That's obviously a lie. That's just media, right? Um, Florentino himself said, yes, we're going for Mbappe, not 2023, 2024. Okay, so we have the green light from Florentino himself. And Mbappe is saying now, I'm not renewing. I'm not renewing. I'm not renewing. That's official. He said it. He sent an official letter. A month after his renewal, that's already a crazy thing. PSG is seeing what this guy is doing. Like PSG, I think they're a bit tired of him. PSG, honestly. Because the only the only um, way he actually came back from playing with the discards, right, was if he forgave some money, right, for for the renewal. Because he was he was supposed to get like a tons of a ton of cash uh, for staying that one extra year, etc. And he forgave that money. They and th- and they said they said it again. We're just listening to actual people in the story. We're not listening to Marca, Madrid, so on, etc. They even said it. Mbappe said it, and Al Khalifi said it. They said, we have a gentleman agreement that if he doesn't renew, we won't have to pay him all that we had agreed earlier to pay him. So I think if you actually listen to the people on the story, they're actually telling us that this year is probably the closest we've been since the catastrophe of 2022 for Mbappe to sign. Because Paris Saint-Germain, I think they're open to sell. Because they already agreed with Mbappe, if he does leave, they won't have some. They, they won't have to give him that much money. I'm pretty sure they're trying to renew him, because obviously you would if you if you have your best player in your club. We already have the green light from Real Madrid that they are actually trying to sign him this year. We're just now waiting. For what and we also have the word from Mbappe officially saying he won't renew. Now it's. Just he has to come to an agreement with Real Madrid, which is not easy because it's not the same agreement he would have had a year ago. It's less money, apparently. What everyone's saying, the athletic. Of course, yeah. Is if, if, there's no question; it's going to be less money. Yeah, and and, and it makes sense, right? Because we have a better team now, and we have we have different options. It's okay. It's 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 less money. Um, now we're just waiting for them to have an agreement. Do you trust Florentino Perez to close a deal with Mbappe? I I do, but I I think. His demands are going to be through the roof, and Florentino is also not the kind of guy who's going to budge a lot. Like he's going, like he would eclipse on his current salary. He would eclipse our salary structure, so he is going to naturally going to have to accept something lower, which he should because that's the trade off you make for wanting to be something a part of something bigger for better PR for uh, a better shot at the Champions League, a better shot at the Ballon d'Or, like all that stuff. Is just bigger and better at Real Madrid. There's no question. So that's the trade-off you make. Uh, I guess, look, I agree with you that it's the biggest, the most realistic it's been since 2022. But that's an, only a two-year window. But last summer, to me, was just never going to happen. Like, it was, 
like you said, it was media hysteria. It was not real what we were witnessing. It was a bunch of Twitter accounts and a bunch of media who didn't have actual real access to the situation hedging their bets opportunistically just in case it happens so that they can look good. It was never going to happen. The reason, like, I can tell you for sure, there are four, maximum five people who know what's happening in Real Madrid and can talk to Florentino Perez yeah. directly that are yeah. in the media. Including uh, including, including us two. So yeah. just know that every, yeah, including us two. Yeah, so two more. So uh, yeah. none of these people were saying anything. If you If you knew who those people were that last summer, those people were not saying a word about this. It was all coming is, from... Is it, is it is is it too much if you say the exact names? I just... So I, I won't put the whole list, but I'll just say that the only person that I would trust okay. 100% is Arancha. If Arancha, oh. if Arancha says something, it's true. But you also... Mm. Like, if you notice, Arancha does not tweet much. She will not join in with... The hysteria yeah. ever like she doesn't do that if she says something it's true Arancha is the one like who I trust the most I think there are there are obviously other really good journalists who know a lot but I'm just talking about someone who has access to Florentino there are others who have access to Florentino but they also will throw in a bunch of their own fabricated fabricated Assumption, stuff and yeah. opinions and assumptions. But Arancha doesn't do that. Arancha only talks about factual stuff. That's why Arancha is the one. And if you pay attention to what Arancha said last year, it was almost nothing. And um, I remember talking to her and she was on the podcast last summer too. And she said, look, there has never been a t an offer. Ramja did not approach Mbappe. There has been nothing. There's never an offer in place. There was no approach, nothing. And this was true until the very end of the window. And then obviously we found out it was true. And of course, everyone who said, oh, it was happening, just kind of walked away with their tails behind the, between their legs. I don't know, man. I, I think I, I don't think it was all smoke last summer, bro. Because let, let's be honest. I think the, the second Benzema leaving was an actual real possibility. I think everything changed. I think they probably evaluated, bro. There's no way... The nine, the number nine just stayed free for the first time in Real Madrid history, I think. And I, I'm pretty sure, man, there, there was, they, they probably tried and they just saw that the difference it will make um, money wise to sign him now and sign him in just free for in the next six months. I think it was basically what, what, what the difference, right? Okay, if we're, if we're buying him now, it's going to be a 300 million operation. If we do it in six months, it's going to be half. I think that's what happened. But I, but I think, but I think, it would have what if if it were to happen after Benzema's departure, it would have had to have been initiated by Mbappe yeah, or, yeah, that's or true, PSG. That's it, that's and true. Real Madrid were not never going to be the one to initiate it. Not this summer, tried, not last though. summer. The, they did two years ago. Don't you think leaving ago. Mbappe out of it? Don't you think leaving <laughs> Mbappe out of the tour and saying to every single media outlet to put out there that they're actually considering a sell? That they want to sell. Don't you think that's trying from, from their camp? Make the call. They have to make the call. In, in the end, they have to pick up the phone. And neither did out of maybe pride or whatever it was. Um, and that's why I, I think, I mean, there's no way he's going to be sold now. But it's gonna, he's going to come for free, which is obviously not free. There's agent fees, signing fees. But I don't think there's going to be, in the end, there's not going to be any contact between Real Madrid and PSG. I don't think, if it happens. It's just going to be okay. between them and the club, and he's a free agent, and he doesn't need PSG at that point. I get it. But let's do this fun thing, just because Okay, let's do we it. love our listeners, right? All right, make let's it fun. It. Let's That's say, what you're good at. Let's say, tomorrow, Fabrizio Romano, Kylian Mbappe to Real Madrid. Here we go. Still won't Confirm. believe it. Official. Right? Still won't believe it. No, okay. I, I know, man. I know. Let, let's say... You do believe it. Let's say that Canadian coffee has some, has some, you know, magic, and you do believe it, right? Mbappe's coming to Real Madrid, 2024. Also, he's not coming alone. Andrik is coming as well. And we already have attackers, because we have Vinicius, we have Rodrigo, we have Oselu. Is Arda in the mix, maybe? Is Brahim in the mix, for sure? 
So if you add to those five, you have Mbappe and Andrik. Oh, seven, right? Mbappe, Andrik. Um, Vinicius, Rodrigo, Brahim, Joselu, and Arda, maybe. Maybe. And Bra- and Brahim, yeah, basically, like seven people. Let's say Mbappe is coming to Real Madrid. How in earth, with this version of Bellingham, that it's true that right now he's been playing more deep, right? But we know what he can do if he doesn't play that deep. And he can literally be the best player in the world from that position. Like a Ballon d'Or player, literally. We have Vinicius, who has shown us his ceiling, which is best player in the world, top three, top four, top five, definitely. And obviously Mbappe, which is arguably the best player in the world right now, right? If we have Vinicius, Bellingham, Kylian Mbappe, we also have Rodrigo, who if, if he's on his streaky uh, thing, like Matt says, that he's a streaky guy, right? If he's on the good side of the streakiness, he's scoring a lot. We have this Brahim who suddenly is the Maradona region. Obviously, someone is not staying. Someone's got to leave. Someone's got to leave. So I would like us to make an exercise. If Mbappe is coming... Who's staying? Who's leaving? Who will we keep? Who will we sell? Who will we loan? And then how could, how does that fit? Like what's the, not the 11. We can do the, the 11, but what's the fit? What's, what's, what's the team? Who are, uh, out of those that stay, that we decide that they should stay, which of those are in the starting 11? I think that's what we should do. I don't, I don't think anyone gets sold. Not this summer. Ooh. Um, the only thing I can think of is maybe you don't renew Hozalu because at that point, when is he ever going to play? Unless he's really, really seriously, okay. isn't he the most unique profile though? That's that's the argument against it. Is that he's the most unique profile? But when are you gonna? Yeah. What that's are you gonna say? Yeah. What are you gonna say to him? Like you know, who's yeah, is he gonna, gonna be? Play? Like you also need to. To prioritize the development of Endrick. So he needs minutes. Sure, he doesn't need to start right away, but he needs minutes. And he's already going to have a tough time with minutes because Rodrigo will probably be the first person off the bench. Brahim is playing out of his mind right now. All okay, these so, guys need interesting. to play. So Rodrigo on the bench, right? You said you just said Rodrigo's the first one coming off the bench. It would have to just be him. Rodrigo on the bench. Yeah, you're not benching anyone have else. To be him? It has to be. Who oh, else is, who else would it interesting. be? Interesting. It's gonna okay, be so Vin- it's gonna be Vinny. You put Bellingham in the attack, right? You put Bellingham yes. in three other midfielders. Yeah. Alternatively, the other only option is because we know Bellingham and Vinny are not going to get benched, and you know Fede is undroppable. Let's go through the locks, undroppable. okay? True. Yeah. Yeah. Vinny, let's go. Yeah. Let's, Vinny let's go. lock, Bellingham lock, Fede lock. That's three, and then Cruz in my lock. Cruz, if he's here, lock. Unless he retires this summer, which would be a travesty. So that's four positions locked. And I think you need Kamavinga and Kamavinga or two many in there. Okay, but let's uh, put you need two many or Kamavinga. So let's put those two in one lock package. So one of those two. How many people that that leaves? And Mbappe is a lock. So that's six. That's a lock. That's your team right there. I think Alfonso Davis is a lock as well. Mm. Uh, <laughs> you have to give us info, bro. Come on, it's been a while, man. There's been Davis nothing. Luck, right? Nothing. There's nothing. There's been no contact between Real Madrid and Alfonso Davies. Nothing. Right. Okay. I can tell I you for it. sure. Yeah. Sell this uh, man. His his yeah, yeah, sure. his priority is still to to resign with Bayern. Bayern. And obviously, Real Madrid needs would need to figure out what they're going to do with either Mendy or Fan Garcia. No. So it's and, okay. And, it's okay. Right. We'll bring right. that forward. That, that that happens. Yeah, we'll we'll bring that forward. Okay, so you let's let's not be um, let's actually you know let's actually say it. Schwamenio or Kamavinga, it can be both. I understand you. Is either Schwamenio or Kamavinga? Who are you putting in instead of who's who's that six? Who's the six? I think Kamavinga is a better player, but because it's the six specifically, I would start Schwamenio. Right. So Pers- you are personally, the same I would I would start both right now. But you can't with. I would start Kamavinga left back, to be quite honest with you. 
Yeah, I, I would too. I would too. I can yeah. City, I would put Kamavinga at left back. Um, mm-hmm. So you would play basically the formation that we're doing right now. You, It's not a 4-3-3, which is what Real Madrid has been played for I don't know how many years. You wouldn't do a 4-3-3. You would do like this 4 triple 2 that they're doing, right? Yeah. It can't be symmetrical. Because you know Mbappe is going to be very similar to the role he played with Neymar. And for a very brief period, the way he played with Benzema in France, even though it was a very brief period... It's going to be very left sided heavy. Oh yeah, and and that very brief period, brief period, and with Benzema and Mbappe was a great period. It those was guys incredible, work, bro. Yeah, they those guys their link up when understanding with each other was amazing, and of course, like they, Benzema will link up brilliantly with anybody you put him next to. So everyone loves playing with him, but it's going to be Vinny and and Mbappe basically playing off each other, mostly on the left side. And the way I envision it in an ideal world, you got Cruz in there too. And all, the entire defense is focused on these guys stopping them on the left. And then bang, Cruz, diagonal switch, Fede Valverde flying up the field, defense broken. And then from there, cut back to Mbappe or Vinny or Jude, whoever's there, profit. It would right. be unstoppable. It would be devastating. The only, my question marks would be on defense. I don't know if you saw recently there was someone, one of these analytics accounts put out a tweet stating that Mbappe has the least amount of defensive actions of any player in Europe, which, you know. Makes sense. That's a trade-off you make for being a superstar. You want to conserve en- energy. But Vinny also doesn't really defend. So you now you have two players who don't defend. Can you avoid the Messi, Mbappe, Neymar disaster? I think you can because... Everyone else behind right. him defends and works really hard. Bellingham, that makes sense. Bellingham defends. Yeah. So you don't like as long as you don't have three of them doing that. I think two of them mm. you'll get away with it. Interesting, because I've seen a, a like many people do a four three three with let's say Shuamani, Cruz, and Bellingham, and Rodrigo, Mbappe, and, and Vini. So if if you have that, that lineup with those three attackers, then it becomes basically a snooze fest. At the at the fence, right? Just what happened with, uh, basically Neymar, Messi, and and Mbappe. That the only way they could actually defend is if they put Di Maria there. That's right? the thing, and that's the that's the one thing about that PSG team. If you notice, their best games were when one yeah, of them was, was injured Di and Di Maria played, because he just brought so much balance. Then okay, then we have okay, then okay. So the solution of that is doing what we just did, because Bellingham can defend. Bellingham can defend. So yes. if we do that, and basically our attacking force is Bellingham, Vinicius, and Mbappe. First of all, what a freaking attack. I'm sorry, Europe, but you are basically done. Second of all, we have some balance there. Because it's true. Vinny and Mbappe won't defend much. Vinny, probably more than Mbappe. Because I remember that Vinny from 2020, 19, 2021. He was defending like a madman, I remember. He was. But not anymore, though. Yeah. yeah not but, but it's by it's design. Okay. It's not because of his laziness. It's because... Ancelotti wants him to stay up the field, whereas yeah, Solari, for field. example, wanted him to defend. Yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. Okay, so we have that th- that defensive structure basically resolved. What about the at- the attacking structure, though? Because it sounds very good what you're saying, because it's true. Mbappe is going to go to the left. Vini is going to go to the left. Bellingham probably will also go to the left. And if you combine that with Cruz, yeah, you have a side of basically Valverde, gluten-free Carvajal, that basically have great energy and they could do damage. Yeah. But we're also basically, uh, that depends. You could, you could also, actually... just quickly, Angela, you could also ask you to play more on the right because he can do that. He did that with Dortmund too. Okay, hopefully that works. But I think that offensive structure is depending a lot on how well can Vini and Mbappe link up. Yeah. And... I think both players, I think why we saw, if you think of, you know, how great Mbappe and Benzema were together and how great Vinicius and Benzema were together, there's a uh, there's basically one thing that's the same in both attacks is Karim Benzema. No one in the squad right now, honestly, probably Bellingham is, honestly in the squad right now has the link up um, play that Benzema does, which is okay. It's not even, not it's not that they, not on the, no one in the squad right now, pro- most teams don't have a guy like Benzema to link up. Yeah, he's a generation. If we're depending on overloading the left side and hoping they can actually link up well, 
um, and just trust that they're just basically the best in the world at the position. I think we will have a lot of um, games, especially in La Liga, when those two don't necessarily link up very well. Like we've seen with Mbappé, we, we've seen already what has happened sometimes with Mbappé in Paris Saint-Germain, that he's not having that he's having link-up problems and it's been tough for Paris Saint-Germain. We've seen it at Real Madrid when Benzema is not there, that Vini and Rodrigo try to overload the left and they try to link up, but not always uh, it happens. We can see a lot of trouble breaking down low blocks like we always do, right? But especially without a structure that we do not have that link up guy. We just don't have it. We just don't have him. We'll be depending on, okay, can Mbappe and Vinny just break the lines? Yes, they can. And they will do it to 99% of the teams they face because they're that good. But I don't know if, if, I don't know if, if that's enough though. I don't, not, not, not the personnel. We have a great personnel. But I don't know if with the coach that we have, with the little tactical offensive structure that we have, I don't know how how, how can that work without Benzema. That link up to the that overload to to one side, and let let them all play together. Let them all link up. They will find a way. I don't know how could that work with, specifically without Benzema. Like you said, Bellingham takes that role. I think. And to some extent, Mbappe does on the offensive side because Mbappe is a great link-up player as well. So is Vinny. Like, all these guys mesh, in my opinion. I think I'm not really worried about... Like, I know a lot of people say, well, maybe Holland's a better fit because he's more of a pure nine. Mbappe is a better player. He's a more versatile player. And he's almost as much as good of a goal scorer than Holland is. And you don't have to play this game where you're pumping crosses into a number nine. You don't have to do that to score with Mbappe. You can get the same amount of goals, if not more, by just getting more offensive production and more fluidity and more link-up play and doing more cutbacks because he's going to get on the end of a ton of cutbacks himself the way Holland can. So I'm just not worried about how that would work. I think, again, if you get past this scenario of like is he going to come is he not going to come is realistic if you get past it and it finally does happen which i'm still skeptical about angelo if it does happen i'm not worried about the tactical fit i'm really not like we've seen you're really not they're just too good right they're too good they're too cerebral they're too smart they're too talented we've only seen a version of of it with mbappe and neymar and it's worked the reason it failed is because one one of them was especially neymar was injured and then it eventually failed because the structure fell apart. Our structure cannot be compared to PSG. We have our the, the entire spine that backs up those attackers. Yeah, just a way better team. Young, man. athletic, two-way midfielders who defend and run yeah. their asses off. Like our structure just is incomparable to PSG. It's a perfect balance. Yeah. Yeah. If you were to like design a system or design a team to back up two players, two superstars who can't defend. It's our team. It's Jude. It's it's Kamavinga. It's Fede. It's someone who can actually get the ball up the field and link up with those guys like Cruz. So I'm not worried about that aspect of it. I think it'll be it'll be fine. I think in that scenario, by the way, like ironically, you as much as he's not that well loved, Ferland Mendy Makes sense. <laughs> in, in I love it, bro. How, how are you just like the the leader of the Mandy Mafia, man? Yeah, uh, it's, it's. I have a love hate relationship with him. I'm just. I'm like to the last like few games. Everyone, bro. Yeah, the last few games he looked a little bit closer to what he was in yeah, 2022. He great. Um, it, it looked great, man. It, yeah. it's, you just can't with that Mandy thing, bro. If we, if we can, if if we and our listeners can dedicate just 15 seconds to Ferlan Sinadine Mandy, right? That this is something about that player that is just weird, man. It's like you love him, you hate him, right? But when you get that version of Mendy that can lock anyone, that can lock Mohamed Salah, that locked Lamin Yamal, that locked every single right winger. Riyad Mahrez, go down the list, man. Riyad, yeah, it's it's just uncomparable. I've never seen something like that, man. That guy literally locks up anyone at their in his best day. It's just On his best day. I've never seen something like that. He yeah, was the way I I described it like in 2022 was that he is the Makaleli of left backs. I remember when I when watching Makaleli play back in the day, if anyone tried to take him on, I would bet my house that Makaleli would win that ball. And I felt that way about Mendy in 2020 to 2022 yeah. that two year range. I 
like full trust in him defensively. He was a wow yeah. man. It was Absolute unbelievable. Wall. It was yeah. unbelievable. Okay, so, so let's do let's do this fast one, right? Let's yeah. do this game fast one. I will tell you a name. You will tell me keep, sell, or loan. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm going to say Mbappe. to most of these players. No, 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 bro. Come on, come on. Let's be honest. We can have more than more than six. We can have more than six. We can have more than six. Actually, six let's do more attackers? Than we can't, yeah. Yeah, six attackers. We can't have more than six. And I, I will tell you more than six. We have to loan or sell someone. Mbappe. Do I get the full list in advance? No, bro, you won't. Mbappe? Okay. Kylian Mbappe. Well, bye, I guess. No, no, bro. He's on. He's already in the team, man. You have to trust, bro. You have to put the energy. Oh, you're, out. you're asking you if Mbappe, I would keep, keep Mbappe after I bought him. Obviously, yeah, keep. Okay, okay, perfect. Vinicius, keep. <clears throat> okay, Rodrigo Goes, keep. Joselu. Uh, terminate. Not renew. Sell. He's not our okay, player, so, so okay. the loan ends. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Brahim Diaz. Keep. Okay, so at the moment you have Mbappe Vini, Rodrigo Brahim. Yeah. Arda Guler. Keep. You would keep Arda Guler. Yeah. Okay, so now you have, I think you have six players. So you have five, I think. Yeah, Rodrigo Guler, Mbappe Vini. I think you have six. And Brahim, I think you have six. No, five. Okay. Andrik. Keep. So are you basically not following the rules, man? You're just keeping everyone? Uh, yeah, you have to. You can, like It's too soon to... You can't, though. You can't, no. though. You have to... And, and, and the cream rises to the, to, the, to, the crop, to the top. I think you need depth. You need players. You need depth. You need... You need it. That and by the way, like I remember, like I've said multiple times, I would renew Joselu, but that yep. obviously changes if if somebody like Mbappe comes, and Endrick is coming. So that's two players that are coming in. You can't keep them all. <clears throat> yeah, that's true. Uh, Goulier, you keep because you just don't. I mean, the max I would do with Goulier is loan him, maybe, but maybe he takes like the Odegaard Kubo route where he you know something like that but you know Goulart can Goulart we're talking about unique profiles that's another one unique profile yeah, yeah that's true because he true. could also he can also play in a deeper role too he could play a 10 could play as a right CM theoretically uh, yeah but if you think so they, there's not really much space for him even for Andrik I, I think but I can't uh, for Andrik and Rodrigo I think that's the major problem that we're going to have in the future like I understand, yeah, but we're that not dealing with it yet. We we'll deal enough. with it in two years, I yeah. think. Not yet. It, we it's a problem yeah. you bring forward. You know what we are dealing with right now, though. No, RB Leipzig. <laughs> RB Leipzig. Just Is Real Madrid winning the Champions League? Yes or no? Yes or no? You need yes. to tell me, man. You need yes. to sell me the smoke. Yes? yes. Yeah. Can you elaborate? Why? Because. There's, I think, two teams that I think one, that that would really give us problems, and that's Bayern and City. Well, if, Barcelona, though. Sure. You want to throw them in there? I don't know, man. We'll Should we? Bone. No, we shouldn't. Uh, they have to worry about Napoli, who are not playing well, but they have the exact recipe to hurt Barcelona on the counter on that suicidal high line that they love to play. I I have done this every year since I've been a fan. No matter whether we're favorites or not, I predict Real Madrid to win the Champions League. What? And most of the time it works. Every year. Doesn't matter if we're in Segunda if we're playing in Kingsley, oh. we can win the Champions League every year. It's in our DNA. If you couple that with a, a, a year where we're actually good, which we are this season, then it's, you know, you got to consider us. It is contingent on health, man, because we've been just destroyed, destroyed with injuries. So it's contingent on health. If, if Rudiger needs to be healthy, 
We need too many Kamavinga, Vinicius, who's been in and out of the team all year with injuries. We need these guys to be on the field. That's the that's the contingency. Contingency. Uh, I also think. Can we can we bring it back to Mbappe for a sec? Yeah, man. Yeah, basically. Yeah, we we can we can do this Mbappe. We can talk about Mbappe. I just I just wanted to say with the Champions League thing. I yeah. hope we win it. But okay, let's let's talk about Mbappe. Let's talk about. Well, the, it's it's not to bring it all the way back full circle and bring it back to him. Yeah. But I I the reason I bring him back up is that I think the difference between this team being a contender for all three competitions to all of a sudden being taken to a level where it's like no no this this Favorites. is not this is this is not no longer a contender or a fringe contender this is the bona fide favorite is a player like him to take it to a whole different level to increase our margin of error, to increase our goal production, our offensive production, to increase the amount of things that defenders have to worry about, to increase our ability to score goals and amid injuries, you know, Vinicius can't play. It's it's somebody like him. It's and that's why when when people say, you know, do we really want this guy? You know, after all this and like, yeah, we do. We need the yeah, best players do, in the world. Yeah, we do. We absolutely okay. do. Okay, but, but, but let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Do you consider Messi the greatest of all time? Oh, man. <laughs> just, the way you switch gears is incredible, man. This... No, 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 no. Actually, no. This is in the same gear. I just Let me just ask you this question. Do you consider Messi the greatest of all time? I personally, I put, I, I think it's a, it's a two-seat table. And it's Cristiano and Messi. Right. Okay, so he's at two-seat table, but, but he's still at the number one table, right? Shared, but he's at the number one, right? Yeah. Yeah. Do you consider Neymar, Suarez, Xavi, and Iniesta great players, right? Yeah. Didn't Barcelona had, if not the greatest player ever, the shared number one, and not not didn't come close to Real Madrid and Champions League success in the last, like, 10, 15 years? This is why... If I'm doing, if I'm picking and I had to pick one, because if let's say, let's pretend it's a draft, right? You have to pick, event, you have to pick one of these guys, number one. One of these guys gets drafted first, regardless of if they're at the same table or not. That's why I take Ronaldo first. Bigger, bigger balls and bigger moments and shows up more. I mean, can he get even bigger than the World Cup? Yes, because you have a whole, let me put it this way. It, when it comes to international tournaments, it comes down to a couple of things. It comes down to the luck of the draw of the, the country you were born in. Uh, it, And I don't deny how hard it is to win the World Cup, but we're also looking at the totality of their careers and not just the tournament. Year to year in the Champions League, Ronaldo showed up. He had the most goals and assists in the, in in the tournament's history, but also the most in the knockout phases, which is where it matters most. When it matters most, right? What happened when he faced Messi at the knockout stages in the Champions League? When it mattered the most? In well, that's why I said we look at the totality of it. We we don't go ice oh. on one or two years. You look at the whole totality of it. You look oh. at right you. That's how we do it, right? So in the end, who had the most trophies, who had the most goals, who had the most assists, who had the most clutch moments? Cristiano, Cristiano. Yeah, that's El Vicho. That's, yeah, we we talked about this. This is he is the greatest player in the greatest competition in club football. It's irrefutable. Right. Right. By the way, so two things. By the way, that's a great clip. So please clip that. That's a great clip. Second is I had to take that messy side just to just to. I know. To I know what you're doing. Play, right? Yeah, I know. Um, I understand. And, and the third, what I tried to do there is the question. I know Mbappe is the guy that takes us to the next level, but I don't think we don't have Mbappe right now, and the team that has Mbappe right now, which is Paris Saint Germain, is not, in my opinion, it's not even the top five contender. <clears throat> yeah, but that's and, not his fault. The team is a mess. 
team, the, the, the midfield, the structure, the way they built the team around him, it had no sporting vision. It's it's not thought out properly. That might change now with Luis Campos and Luis Enrique, but it's going to be a long term project. Project that whether he has patience for it or not, it's not for me to say. But that 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 doesn't exist here. To that, like that, we have a proper project and a proper vision. It's totally different. You you can't fault him for that. Also, like, can you fault him for let's let's for random example when we knocked him out in two thousand twenty two? Would you say he did his part? He murdered us. He scored in both legs. He let Messi take the penalty. We saw what happened there. And the team just choked after that. And that's why, like, you have to look at the surrounding pieces. When Barcelona got knocked out eight years in a row, you what was Messi doing in that elimination game? Wait, what, 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 happened, what happened eight years in a row? When Barcelona got knocked out and... Oh. Uh, that just sounds good, man. Messi was just walking around, right? And that's why that's why I said we look at the totality of it. Like and Messi did his part. Messi did his part for us, for sure. For his opponents. <laughs> so I just don't think you can blame Mbappe for for those PSG failures, is, is all I'm saying. You think you think he can win some Champions Leagues for Real Madrid? You think he will? Yeah. No question. You think, will we celebrate another Champions League in the next two to three years? Yes. I think will we, we celebrate one in the next two years. We get one in the next two years. Could be this year. Could we win it? Could we win it this year? Yes. Actually? Yes. Yeah, we could. We can We can beat City in the two legs? In two legs. Um, I think we're better equipped to beat City this year. We've probably learned from the past... From our mistake last year, we have a better team. Uh, and they're worse, by the way. They're not playing as well, but you know they could obviously get their shit together when they play us. It is also, you know, I, who knows what's going to happen? But maybe you get a situation where Bayern draw City and they have to fight, you know, for two legs. Hopefully, man. When was yeah. the last time we got a good draw? Honestly, I feel like we always have the worst. Leipzig. Draws ever. Leipzig was okay. It could have been like yeah, Inter. Or who else? I can't remember, but um, can we get like a Leipzig, more. then like a Real Sociedad, and then a semifinal? Can we get Benfica, bro? Something like that. I'd sign up for Please, it, man. I'd sign up for it. And so, yeah, that it all depends on the matchup too, right? Is Billy have the guy to get us the Champions League this year? This is your podcast, man. This is amazing. You just turned completely flipping flipping the script. Uh, is Bellingham? What was the question? Bellingham. Is 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 he the guy to give us the Champions League the fifteenth this year? This year, I'm talking about this year, not next year with Mbappe. This year, I'll, I'll give you a hotter take. The answer to the question is yes, but I think Bellingham is going to win the Euros with England this year. <laughs> okay, he's going to win the Euros, right? Why can't he win the Champions League then? I did. I, I said he could. I said literally said he could. He can do both. Okay, so he's gonna win the Euros. He can win the Euros this year. You, you yeah. think so? Yeah. You know. You know. You know what that means, right? Ballon d'Or. That's another thing with Mbappe. Don't you think? Like he has to come, bro. That's. I know you're still skeptical. He has to come. He sees the Haaland thing. He sees the Bellingham thing. Can he share the spotlight with Bellingham? W- will he be okay with that? They won't get in each other's way. Like what? At some point, you gotta share. If you want to be a part of a good team, at some point, you gotta just accept sharing spotlights. You can't just run away to bad teams where there's no good players because you want the spotlight. You want to go. You want to win. You, there's gonna be shared spotlight. That's how it works. You want good teammates. There's gonna be spotlights. What do you want? You want to be the star of a bad team? Why? I mean, that's that's basically what he's been choosing for the last five years. Yeah, well, that then that goes back to the skepticism, but that I have of him wanting to come and saying no to to the financial mountain that's going to be thrown his way again this summer. Unless he just made so much money now, and that was his goal. He's like, okay, I'll just make so much money that 
taking less money now just doesn't matter. Now I can just really focus on where I want to play. What, what a great thing to do, man. Imagine you're in that position. Okay, I just made so much money. Now I'm going to just speak with Diego and Churros. Okay, I think now it's time for me to... Is that what to, you're doing do now with podcasts. Kings League? Yeah, that, that's basically that's basically what I did, man. I made so much money from YouTube. I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm now going to have a team. But that's exactly what I did. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. So you're actually playing in the Kings League, right? I no, we're presidents of a club. Oh, you don't we play have teams. yourself? We sign players. Listen, if we had to play, we'll be in a major disadvantage. That's the truth. So thanks God, thanks to God we don't play. So you're signing ex players? Yes, bro. I'm in the same league that Chicharito is, that James Rodriguez is, bro. I'm sharing this polo with James Rodriguez, bro. Can you believe that? Who, who's stuff? your best player in your team? Um the team, Anyone I know? So we have we have 10 players. No, because we have 10 players from a draft. And then we have an 11th and 12th player that is um, basically signed apart. But they are not players that you know. They're just very good people at, at like a lower level league, like a second division, third division. They're just really good at that level. And we have, have a third option that most people buy. Most people sign like a celebrity. We're trying to get Mariano Diaz in for at least a game. You would retire after that. Yeah, I will love it, man. Why lie. is why is James Rodriguez playing Kings League? He's still playing professional Cause, football. Because you don't play Kings League, bro. You're a president. You just stream the games and you react to the games. Imagine you basically watch every Real Madrid game streaming in Managing Madrid Twitch, and there's your camera and there's the Madrid game happening. But you don't play. You manage. You're the president of the club. I hire staff. I hire a coach. I hire a second coach. Isn't Kings League players. former players? Is I thought that's what it was. No, no. A former player can be signed by a club, which meant if I wanted to sign, let's say, Roberto Carlos, and I want him to play a game, I have to directly get in contact with him and say, hey, would you like to play in this in, in my team for a game? And I have to pay him for that game if he charges me. So it's it's basically you run the club legit. You actually run the club in a legit way. You get sponsorships. You get all that, that stuff. It's a hard work. It's a lot of work, actually. So the roster... So Roberto Carlos doesn't join your roster. He just plays one game, if that happened. I'm so yeah, confused. Yeah, he isn't okay. joining your roster. But it's the, 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 actually, there's some ex-players that join the roster. For example, there's another club which is owned by a YouTuber who's from Chile. And he's massive. He has like 70 million subscribers, something like that, right? He's massive. And he signed an ex-player, uh, a guy that played the World Cup 2010 with Uruguay. I think it's okay. Thanks Pereira or something like that. Okay. They're, they're good. But not anyone. You don't have to sign an ex player. You do it if you think it's going to be good enough to actually benefit the team, but you don't have to. Is it worth it for managing Madrid to do Twitch during the games? Mm -hmm. Managing Madrid during the the Real Madrid games? Yeah. A hundred percent, bro. Reacting? A hundred percent. Because imagine, for example, if you did it in 2022, that'll be your most viewed videos ever. Imagine this just reacting to the a comeback of Paris Saint-Germain, comeback city, comeback Liverpool. It will be the most viewed videos ever. It will have millions of views and clips and YouTube because you're reacting to it. Of course, man. It would it be, be tough to do but if we're at the games, but if we were at home watching on, on TV... I don't know. The thing I, is, like, I get so... I, 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 I'm, like, writing gets, notes and... It doesn't matter, bro. I, I think mm. what you should do, actually, is time the Real Madrid games and yeah. you should go live on YouTube. You already do live calls. Keep those for the Patreons. Yeah. And do those, like, two to three times a week. But every time Real Madrid plays, for example, if we play this Saturday, you should go live after the game. You know the post-game show that you do? Not the during way, the game. The after the game? Yeah, I'll, I'll let you know. By the way, if you're a listener, we'll give you some very good tips. So if you want to start a podcast, maybe do this, right? But after the Real Madrid game, you go live. In YouTube, you go, and you do it for free. You actually do that for free, the show. Uh, and, and you go free, you go live. Um, and basically, the post-game podcast that you and Matt do, you guys should do it live. Do it live. But not... Not with uh, not in Zoom, but people ask you a question and where people can actually unmute themselves and interrupt you the call. No, 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 of course, you go not, live, no. yeah, exactly. You'll go live and let the people listen to it live and you can get engagement. And then you basically clip that thing and you still post it as a as an episode, but it's yeah. live, it's better because I think you're gonna because sometimes it happens to me a lot, bro. 
Um, it happens to me a lot that um, that I'm listening. For example, the Atletico game, bro. I was refreshing the whole night. My feed, bro. I was like, when is this gonna drop? 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 So if yeah. you go live right after, because sometimes it takes time. The pre-production, the production, and then the posting. If you go live, for those people that want to be there listening to you at that time. They're going to have it, bro. Like, so you go live on YouTube or Twitch people. and then you save the recording and post it on the podcast too, right? That's how it works. You can do both, bro. You can co-stream it. You can go live on YouTube and Twitch. You can go both. I will pick one, to be honest. I'll pick one. Uh, Probably YouTube, just because you're already in YouTube. So probably that. So you can get subscribers and stuff like that. And then the revenue is make. It's make also revenue in YouTube. And you do it. I will, man, uh, we, can, we can have... Yeah, we'll, we can we'll let the listeners go to listen part two, and then we can have a little talk off cam off. Yeah, off yeah, we'll, we'll we'll talk about it. Yeah, we'll figure it out. I'll get some tips from you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. As you know, like I'm this part of the industry, I'm I'm still learning, right? So it's okay, man. Yeah, we're all learning, bro. We're all learning. Liz, guess what? Like that. You say you you say you're you say <clears throat> you're learning. I learn from you. I literally learn from you, man. And look. Yeah, you are learning, but you do know more than ninety nine percent of people. Oh, we just try every day, man. Every day, get a little bit better, learn a little bit more. We we take it somewhere, man. It it gets somewhere yeah. eventually. Yeah. Uh, all right, Angelo, this was fun, man. I think uh, you and I talk. We're gonna we're gonna do this more often. Thanks for hopping on yeah, the podcast. Should. Thanks for bringing the energy. And uh, yeah, we will stay in touch, my friend. Where can people find you? Uh, people can find me in YouTube, Los Futbolitos, Los Futbolitos, so L O S F U T B O L I T O S, Los Futbolitos. If you if you if you speak Spanish, bienvenido al canal Los Futbolitos. Um, and you can also find me on Instagram, TikTok, Los Futbolitos. We have a podcast there. Uh, we have a show now. It's, it's all, all what we do. Everything is now live stream, basically. So yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Go check out Angelo. Uh, his social media, personal social media is also tagged in the show notes. You can go click on that directly. Thanks, Angelo. Great chatting, buddy. Peace out. Great chatting. Hey, let's go to part two. Part Hi two. to Lucas. All right. Welcome to part two of the Managing Madrid podcast. We got Lucas Navarrete here. He is ready to give us all the hot takes from the Atletico game. All the tweets that went viral for him. He's uh, cracking his knuckles, ready to go, ready to bring in the heat. <laughs> Lucas, how are you, man? How you doing? I'm doing fine, Kian. How are you doing? Not bad. Not bad at all. Um, so we're going to talk about Darby. Lingering thoughts. This is the El Dia Después segment of sorts. I I kind of still feel the same way now than I did after the game. How do you feel? Just in terms of like my reaction to it, the takes, who performed well, who didn't. Yeah, I feel I feel the same way too. I I I got to rewatch the game yesterday, and yeah, kind of doubled down on my initial thoughts after the game as well. Like Real Madrid pretty much wasted a very good opportunity there to to beat Atletico, even though they were shorthanded. So yeah, I'm kind of a of a of a shame and a pity to to waste that good opportunity to kind of face. Saturday's game against Girona in a more calm and relaxed manner rather than now having to get the win in order to build some kind of separation in, in the table. But yeah, I agree with you. I, 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 it's not that I notice anything different on, on rewards than I did on the, um, when I was the game live. Well, can you share what you did think? Because I know you weren't on the post game show on, on mm -hmm. Saturday we played. Yeah, Sunday. Yeah, yeah, Sunday, yeah, Sunday, yeah, Sunday, yeah. Well, the 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 center backs were just atrocious. Carvajal again, I can obviously uh, give the benefit of the doubt because it, it's never his position and his duty to take care of that kind of uh, defensive assignment uh, as a center back. So I definitely don't blame Carvajal for this one. Nacho, I feel like. Completed yet another abysmal, atrocious performance to kind of follow into the pattern that he's been uh, putting together so far this season. I think he's been pretty bad this season, pretty abysmal. Seems to me that he that he usually performs well whenever he's kind of trying to earn his spot and compete for for the spot as a reserve. And as soon as he gets any kind of 
guaranteed role and and relevant minutes as a starter, he kind of fades back a little bit. So I think it's been a very disappointing season for for Nacho so much that I feel like Real Madrid probably will need to address this position in the in the transfer market next summer because I don't think you can rely on on him uh, for the for the next season in case Alaba is not back in his full form or in case any injuries happen. I think that he's been this bad that Real Madrid will probably need to address this position even if it's by signing an, 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 or promoting an academy player or bringing back an academy player, whatever. So, yeah, Nacho, to me, was was quite bad. And then, to me, the other the other kind of responsible... I I feel bad sharing that I blame someone for entire for entirely for the for a you know for for the for the draw or whatever. But I think Ancelotti was very bad with his substitutions, his decisions uh, during the game, and his management of the game was pretty bad. I think he pretty much allowed Atletico to kind of force Real Madrid to sit back and defend during that last part of the game when Real Madrid were pretty comfortable. I feel like for the majority of the game and taking Brahim off made no sense to me. And and also putting like playing without a single uh, relevant and, and and impactful offensive player for the last twenty minutes or so made also made no sense to me. So yeah, those two were probably my main uh, responsibles for the for the draw, if you will. Yeah, I, that was one of my takeaways too. I think one of the reasons we dropped two points was because of the subs. Yeah, and I've seen people say, well, you know. Brahim is not preventing Marcos Llorente from scoring that and Nacho making that mistake or Kamavinga losing the ball in midfield. No, but I think you're thinking about it the wrong way. I think you're, you would have scored two goals instead of, you know, you would have given yourself a big cushion. Now, to be fair to the team, we all saw that we were robbed of three penalties, which would have made a huge difference in this game. Against Getafe, those two penalties that Brahim and Vinicius should have gotten, thankfully didn't make a difference. Against Atletico, it made a huge difference. Uh, yeah, but just I, to quote really quick, just to quote Mehedi real quick, before we get on, on, like, the referees to me should be like the last uh, thing we point our fingers towards, right? When when you got so many things wrong in this game, and you did, as uh, as Real Madrid, you then you you cannot afford to blame the referees when you get when you got so many things wrong in the first place. And also, let's let's be honest. Like, I'm not sure if three is the right number in terms of robbed of three of three calls. Those three were probably argu- are arguable and debatable. But uh, and also you maybe got the benefit of the doubt in the this in the Atleti disallowed goal. So I, the referees are bad as usual, man. It's just you you have you just have to take care of business and get your own decisions and your own uh, building of the team uh, and the foundation of the team for this game right before we blame the referees because the referees are bad in the Spanish league and we all know this. Okay, so in general, in principle, I agree with you that the referees, we're not going to sit here and blame the referees. But I think in this particular instance, I think it's worth bringing up because I don't think that the calls were arguable or debatable, like you said. I think they were pretty All clear. three. Yeah, I think all three were pretty clear penalties. Um, I also think that Atletico goal was disallowed correctly. So, because that's what you were referring to, right? That was the Atletico call. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Is it at the top of the blame list? Of course not. Um, given the circumstances that we were playing with only one center back and Vinicius dropped out of the lineup, and we, I, I, I think it's fair to bring up the fact that, you know, if we get at least one of those penalties, this is a completely different game. I think it's fair. But I do agree with you that they're not the primary purpose, uh, the, the primary reason we lost. The... The subs also, I I was trying to put myself in Ancelotti's shoes, which is obviously an impossible task because I'm not one of the greatest coaches of all time, so I can never at, properly see it. But I was trying to see the perspective of the subs he made. I think his biggest concern in that game was, I don't want to test Carvajal and Nacho. We're, we're up one nothing. I want these guys to be tested as little as possible, so... How do I do Don't that? Don't fucking well, play them, though. What's that? Don't play them together, then. Oh. Like, <laughs> what? What? what yeah, you, you, you had have? options. No, you what? had options rather than Carvajal. <laughs> yeah, you you could have played Mendy as a center back. Oh, you think would have been better than Carvajal in the air? 
Yeah, yeah, would have helped. Would have helped in the air, definitely. No, Carvajal was. Car- Mendy I is not so. better than Carvajal in the year. He's at least taller. Uh, he could have reached some balls that Carvajal didn't reach. But th- that's not... Come on, man. That th- we're, we're asking, like... We're arguing over Carvajal versus Mendy center back. Let's, let's listen to ourselves. For uh, this is not Carvajal's fault. Yeah, this is not Carvajal's fault, for sure. But yeah, I mean, Mendy would have... <laughs> I mean, he would have he made a difference just because of his height. I, I stand by this, he, uh, and I will die on this hill just because of his height. He will, he would have made a difference. He's taller than both Nacho and Carvajal. Uh, I'm and not it gonna... was a matter of physical ability, not, 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 not. It wasn't big, a matter of Carvajal and Nacho being poor in the air, which they also are. It was a matter of them being just like short. It was that simple, really. I'm not going to let you die in the hill. Rescue mission. I'm coming to get you. We're <laughs> both getting off the hill. Car- Carvajal is better in the air than Mendy, statistically speaking. Mendy is not good at all. So we're talking about height, but like let's. So again, it's not like they had. He had that many options. Okay, he had the option A was Carvajal, option B was Mendy, and I think it was not just. Th- so each one of those options had their own dominoes. So you're either choosing Vasquez or Camavinga as your left back depending on who you choose, right? Because you're bringing one into the middle. I think, in hindsight, Vasquez had a really good game against mm-hmm. Atletico. So, you know, I, it's, it's hard to fault him for that. But uh, anyways, going back to the subs, I think what he was trying to do was like, okay, so if I don't want this back line to be tested that much, the next best thing is to put every single midfielder I have Plug the holes, plug the channels, and don't let Atletico penetrate. And of course, it's not that simple because our pitfall was we weren't able to escape pressure. And Nacho just did not even attempt to put a body on Marco Llorente. I Yeah, I mean, anyways, it was the wrong decision in hindsight, those subs, regardless. And we just really missed an attacking punch. Not only you had Brahim, no purpose whenever you recovered the ball. Yeah, it's like you didn't have any any purpose, any anything to do whenever you were recovering the ball, and when, or whenever you had the ball. Like you had all those midfielders, but what for? And they had nobody to pass the ball to. So yeah, it made no sense to me. And also, yeah, Ceballos Pozole was isolated. Yeah, and Ceballos is hard to play in, in such an intense game after the slump he's been in for the last uh, months or so. I, I. This match against Atletico wasn't ideal for the Bayos to get a, to get some minutes, and I don't know. Brahim seemed just fine to me. I don't know why he took him out. I, this is some the Brahim substitution was just baffling, especially if you were willing to kind of let Atletico attack. He's so brilliant on counter attacks. He wasn't tired to me. Did, what, did you think he was tired? Uh, no, I, I seemed just fine to me. The 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 explanation or like the rationale that the guys gave on the podcast. I don't remember if it was Matt or Jose. They thought it was a hierarchy thing that Modric needs to get on the field. Yeah, it was. And it's hard to argue with that. But I, mm, in based on merit, it, it really shouldn't no, be no, that sorry, hard. It, to, it, no, no, no. I mean, it's not hard to argue that that's the theory. Like, ah, that, okay. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty, it's pretty clear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, which, of course, in these cases, you can't go based on that kind of emotion because based on merit, Brahim deserved to play and. It's not like he's been playing a million minutes and he's tired. And, and so that's based, based on merit. Rodrigo should have probably <laughs> left the field ahead of Brahim too. Like if you were if you were wanting to get rid of an attacker, Rodrigo should have been the one. I agree, not Brahim. With that. I agree with that. But then of course they both came off anyway, which was even more surprising. And you yeah. just lost all the attacking punch you had. Can we go back to Nacho for a second? We have limited time. Yeah, um, sure. You mentioned getting a center back in the summertime to address this. Do you? I think the club is going to give him the renewal. You, 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 what have you been hearing based on your source? I think he'll do whatever he wants to do, similar as Modric and, and he, the veterans yeah. and these legends like Carvajal. Well, Carvajal, not anymore. Like Carvajal is a must, obviously, in terms of him staying for a few more years, but. These players who are already on, on their declines, like mm, Lucas Vázquez, Modric, Nacho, these guys will stay as long as they want to stay. 
Real Madrid will not do them dirty, especially when they when Nacho kind of did them a favor, right, in the past by rejecting better offers, better minutes, because he wanted to stay and play and, and, and be a Real Madrid player forever. Like, Real Madrid would probably reward that sentiment now. So, yeah, I, I, I think if he wants to stay in Madrid, I think he will. I just wouldn't treat this this way. I would I, I would kind of be more ruthless maybe. I so I think it's important to treat players well. Uh I think it's really important to reward loyalty. And again, you're not renew, renewing Nacho as a starter. You're renewing him as a fourth choice center back. You might be though. Like because we saw of, this, yeah. Because things can happen during the course of a season that all of a sudden your fourth center back needs to be your starter for half a season. It's rare, obviously. It's like tremendously rare that this will happen next next season again. But you know, things can happen, and you might be forced to play your fourth center back in a crucial game here and there. I and mean, if Nacho isn't able to play at a high level, you're screwed. So yeah. I agree, but I I think. I'm arguing that it's hard to find a better fourth choice center back in terms of players who accept the role, players who love the club, and players who are pretty serviceable. I know he's not having a good year, but I'm just looking at the totality of all. It's still kind of we discussed ex- Mario Gila in the in the winter. Would Mario Gila be worse than Nacho now? The way not. I'm look. I think fans are being really emotional about Nacho. I think the reality is he's not been that bad outside those mistakes, which is a weird thing to say. He had like eight clearances against Atletico, and they were pretty solid clearances. And I'm not saying that he had a great game. I'm just saying that I think he's making consequential mistakes that are going to get magnified, and he needs to do better. But I just don't know if he's... I don't know. I'm. I, I guess I'm just not ruling it out that he puts in a few really good performances to close the season. And uh, maybe Can you name a single a player on the team. roster who's been worse than Nacho? Um, this season? I think Alaba was pretty poor before I got, he got injured. Or not, not as poor as Nacho, I don't think. He was poor and so far in terms of what we were used to seeing from Alaba. But he was not costing the team points the way Nacho has. For the last, I'd have to go back to two, it, but Alaba's months, really. had some pretty bad mistakes this season. Yeah. Like, similar yeah. where he has to defend in the box and he just gets it completely yeah. wrong. The only, like, there's been the only defender, two defenders, Carvajal and Rudiger. Those have been... And Rudiger, uh, yeah. Yeah, those have been the two. I've just been foot perfect, n- nearly foot perfect. Yeah. About as perfect as you can be um, mm-hmm. for a baller at this level. Um. So I don't I don't know what's going to happen with Nacho, but I think we both think that the club will give him the renewal if he wants it. And if, if I'm he not wants so, it, yeah. why wouldn't he want it? This is a yeah. great scenario. yeah now now yeah it's either retirement or or an extension for him at this point. I think his value has dropped significantly for the last few years. It's not that he has options to to play some more minutes in elite football elsewhere, like he had the, this Roma offer seven or eight years ago, right? He was considering really hard to maybe give it a go at, at a big club like Roma in, in Italy and ultimately decided to stay in Madrid. And now it's probably either retirement or or contract extension unless, I don't know, Saudi Arabia comes calling for whatever reason because Nacho is not this kind of marketable player who will increase the reputation of your of your league so i don't see that happening either so yeah it's 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 probably up to him whether or not he wants to retire i think he's he in terms of age he's still let me check he's turned he just turned 34 so it's not like he's old enough to kind of assume that he's going to retire i think he'll he'll stay yeah I'd I'd like to put this on record. I'm I think I'm the last person who believes in you, Nacho. I believe in you. I think you heard it here first, Lucas. Nacho will have a performance this season in a big game where we're all like, see, told you you should have been patient with him. I think he's gonna have one more, at least one more in the bag. He's gonna come back and he's gonna ha- he's gonna 
prove everyone wrong like he did against Salah yeah, right, last season. Yeah, right when Militao gets ready to play again. He'll, he'll go to back to his, to his good form. He'll start to see the pressure. Well, not the pressure. I mean, it's a given and an assumption that Militao will recover in the starting spot. But yeah, all of a sudden, Nacho will recover his good form. Pretty sure, yeah. That's, what, that's what's always happened for the, last, for the last few years. That he's delivered when called upon, but not when he had this certainty of starting week in and week out. So, yeah. Um. Just one or two minutes left here before we got to wrap it up. Did you see, uh, so Managing Madrid on the, the, the Twitter account posted a video of um, the former VP of Integrity of the Spanish Football Federation. Uh, did you see that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so the news itself is not necessarily new, but I think the video is new. In terms of, I don't think we've seen the video before, and that's why it was posted. But it was this. Uh, uh, in the in the video, the former VP admits that Rubiales forced her to delay the Busquets suspension so that he could play in the Clasico in 2019. Miran said that uh, it was the same Clasico that Bale got his goal disallowed and Varan got the two cleats on his on his thigh and the penalties denied. I I. Wasn't sure if it was actually the same classical or not. Maybe you remember it better than me, but I'm not sure either. But I will take his word. I if mean, it Miran is, is uh, it doesn't really yeah. change the fact. I mean, if it's not, then it's just you know just another classical that was a mistake. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. brutal. But exactly. um, I don't know. I why am I bringing this up? I don't know. I just I'm just bringing it up so that <laughs> awareness. It's not gonna make the Stay news. Woke. Though. You've seen you've seen Spanish outlets like not giving a shit about this, not publishing the video anywhere, Pre- not anywhere big, any, any, anyway. So yeah, it's not it's not gonna make the news. It's just same as usual. Uh, well, it's gonna make our news. So we're doing our part. <laughs> we're doing our our part uh, in society. All right, man. Uh, any anything you wanted to uh, to to say before we wrap it up? No, not really. Just wanting to to get ready for the Girona game, which will be huge in terms of uh, title uh, odds and, and and the potential definition of the title. So yeah, hopefully Real Madrid are ready to to step it up there. Pay attention to to Vinicius and how he uh, recovers from his uh, neck injury and neck issues. So hopefully he'll be ready for that one and and Real Madrid kind of bounce back from this from this draw. Um, did you see <laughs> Jokic faking Aiton? One of the greatest pump if, pump fakes I've seen. Yeah, I was gonna send it to you on IG. I was like, "There's no way Lucas hasn't seen this yet." I yeah, someone yeah. in the comments on that IG video said, "In 40 years from now, people are gonna look at this video and think Jokic played against plumbers." I thought it was so true <laughs> because you look at Aiton, like, what is he reacting to? All like the. There was this thing <laughs> like that was shocking defense, unbelievable. But yeah, yeah, it, it's a it's a good the... combination. It's a good combination of Jokic's ability and 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 Aiton's like not giving a shit. <laughs> Classic yeah. as usual, Aiton. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> also, I just want to say that Maredista Joel Embiid was vindicated for you giving him so much shit. Now he it was clear new that injury they, they according need... to his coach. I don't know, man. Either way, I understand what the he load said. management is all I'm saying. <laughs> I understood that, it. That's what that's what Nurse said. Yeah, as a Raptors fan, you probably know if Nurse is bullshitting of being honest. But after, just immediately after the injury, he said that that it wasn't related to the issues that were bothering and beating Denver. So yeah, as a Raptors fan, I'm just spiraling in depression, man. It's <laughs> really hard to watch the games right now. I'm trying my best. <laughs> Uh, all right, bro. already sold the Scotty, man. What's that? Already traded the Scotty. Already sold the Scotty and traded him Why? away. Why? Like he's, <laughs> he's doing. He's doing good individually. Not producing at the level oh, I bought. Uh, I bought stats. him to. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. Just fantasy. Just fantasy. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right, man. <laughs> well, we gotta go. Thanks right, for chatting. Yes, it was uh, good catching up. We'll talk soon. Peace out. Yes, sir. You too. Peace.